So I always find it interesting to explore the unexplored in Smite, what could have been and what's possible with all the various mechanics in game. You'll know this if you've watched any of my videos about the highest damage kits, best passives, etc. Well today I'm taking that to a whole new level and attempting to create what I think is the ultimate ADC god possible using existing abilities and mechanics within Smite. It should be pretty self explanatory but I'm going to be creating a fake ADC slash basic attack focus god out of current abilities in Smite using an existing passive, first, second and third ability and of course an ultimate. Just to keep things from being too crazy and to make things a little more interesting, I'm limiting the abilities to their own slots, so I can't for example take Kronos' second ability and say it's the third slot ability for my theoretical god, no. If it's the second ability of an existing god, it's the second ability of my fake god, and likewise for other ability slots. So as with my other videos in this format, the abilities themselves are judged in a vacuum outside their respective god kit. So any resources or interactions with other parts of their home kit will not be counted. Taking sets 1 as an example, I won't count the extra damage from clones because that's a separate part of his kit. For the sake of my sanity, stand switch abilities are disqualified and the actual abilities of stand switchers are judged on their own, not as a pair. So I am allowed to use Ulla's 2, but I have to use either Bow Stance 2 or Axe Stance 2, not both. Also, since we're using abilities from all gods in Smite, I'm just going to ignore the fact that some of them use magical power and some use physical power and just convert it to a generic power value for the sake of this theoretical god. Just so we don't have issues with abilities that specifically state increased magical power, for example. I'm also going to self-impose a rule of one ability per god, just so I don't end up making an existing god by just using a bunch of abilities from the same character. I know this is a lot of setup, but I want to be clear how I'm judging each ability, so one final thing, any ability that breaks the game, makes no sense, or otherwise ceases to function outside the home kit of the god is also banned. So Rama's 1 for example simply doesn't work without Astral Arrows which are a part of his passive, so in my fake god it will be a useless ability, hence it's banned. Okay with that done, let's jump into this with our passive. So there's a few passives I have in consideration for this ultimate ADC god, those being Sol, Anubis, Apollo, Olorun, Ymir, and Kali. So Sol passive is obviously batshit insane for an ADC. It's half the reason why her basic attack game is as strong as it is. At max heat, Sol gains 20% increased power, 25% attack speed, and 20% bonus basic attack damage. That's easily more than an item worth of stats that she gets for free, and they're perfect stats for a basic attack focused ADC style god. Apollo passive is similar, granting a 100% boost to attack speed for 5 autos after 10 basic attack hits. This could cause issues with attack speed capping in the rest of the list, but you can't really argue with such a massive steroid just in the passive of a god. Anubis passive is pretty crazy in the context of an ADC. Instead of giving insane attack speed or power steroids, it provides the defensive crutch for this theoretical ADC, granting CCR and protections, but also doubling the god's healing from lifesteal once you hit some abilities, which I don't think I need to say how strong that would be on a hunter that can build RC, crit and devourer's gauntlets. However, this does only trigger from abilities, not basic attacks, so you'd have to stack it up from 3 abilities and then use your basic attacks. Kali passive is obviously crazy, being able to full heal after every kill is just ridiculous. With the way ADCs can roll through teams, this would definitely be insane, but when you take away Kali's survivability in the form of her ultimate, it becomes a little less powerful as a standalone passive. Ymir passive is deceptively busted. Being able to reduce your target's damage output by 10% is nice, but where this passive really breaks the game on an ADC is the double damage on your basic attacks to affected targets. This passive states all abilities that affect enemies, so really most abilities we could choose would activate this passive and literally double the damage of your auto attacks for 4 seconds, at which point you can just reapply the debuff with another ability and keep going. And finally, Ola Run, which would allow our ADC to have free crit chance without even needing to build it. This would allow for full power and attack speed builds to be possible while still utilising the insane damage of crits. Pretty powerful. However, this passive does also cap your crit chance at 70% and limits your crit damage to 60%, making it a little less appealing. So this is probably the hardest ability slot to choose of them all. There's some absolutely busted passives here for our ADC and any of them will be amazing in their own way. But I think I have to go with Ymir. It's simply far too strong to not choose. Double damage on basic attacks is just completely busted on an ADC style god and it will be easier than ever to apply this debuff providing we choose abilities in the other slots that can do so. This applies not only to gods but to enemies in quotes which affects minions for wave clear and also objectives. 
Imagine how fast this card could shred Fire Giant with their autos doing double damage. Just insane. Okay, moving on to the first ability slot with the knowledge that we have Ymir's passive to work with. My options for the first slot are Kernanos, Medusa, Jubilanke, Arachne, Bologna, and Erlang Shen. So Kernanos and Exfile are in a similar boat. They're both toggleable boosts to basic attacks that are of course useful to ADCs. I mean, they're in ADCs kit in the actual game, so it makes sense. Expel gives flat bonus damage, which is always nice. This would also be boosted by our Ymir passive, since the damage is added onto the actual damage of the auto attack itself. So effectively, the bowlers add 100 damage to every auto, and that's before crit. Then you also get the wave clear and poke aspect of the branching bowlers after the hit as well. Kernanos has a similar effect in his summer heats, however it's significantly less damage, mostly because it's additional damage not built into the basic attack itself, so the passive wouldn't proc it. However, CERN has the flexibility of also having the other three seasons, giving lifesteal, an on-hit slow, and an on-hit protection reduction, which can be nice in a pinch and they're more situational. Medusa, Arachne, and Erlang Shen are all basic attack steroids with cooldowns. Medusa gives some crazy attack speed, and pretty good bonus damage on every auto. More than Expal and Kernanos for sure, but of course this one has a cooldown. This would however activate our Ymir passive pretty easily, which Expals wouldn't. Arachne Steroid is a one-time hit, but does tons of damage and also provides some healing to our ADC, which is always nice. Not completely essential since we're an ADC and we can probably build lifesteal anyway, but it's nice to have. Once again, it will activate our Ymir passive from range. Erlang's 1 provides bonus damage similar to that of Expal's bowlers and would have a similarly low cooldown. Of course, bowlers have no cooldown, but Erlang 1 has very little cooldown since you can take 1 second off of it every time you land an auto attack. On a ranged character like an ADC, this will be very strong. And finally, we have the weird pick of the bunch, Bologna's Shield Bash. Her weapon swap mechanics are built into the abilities themselves, not her passive, so this ability is working and legal for our purposes. Having block stacks on an ADC would be nutty, however I have to assume this ability would turn our god into a melee one for the duration, which is not ideal. Though Freya has made the melee ranged thing work, so it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. This one was really close, especially between Medusa, Arachne, Erlang and Expal. But for me, I think Expal's bowlers are just too strong. Not only is it 100 extra damage on every auto attack due to Ymir passive, but it's also some early game wave clear, which means we don't have to focus on getting a wave clear in our other slots. It has the most synergy and covers the most options. So Ymir passive, Expel's branching bowlers, let's get ourselves a second slot ability. The ones in the running for this slot are Kronos, Fenrir, Chernobog, Aokwang, Olorun, Artemis and Nejar. Any of you wondering where Poseidon is, his 2 does fixed base damage, it's not a triple auto attack like people think it is, hence it wouldn't be great here. So Kronos, Olorun, Chernobog, Artemis and Nejar are all some form of basic attack speed steroid. They each have varying amounts of attack speed and other benefits to choose from. Olorun has 40% attack speed but has the bonus Suns effect. Artemis has the most attack speed at 80% but only comes with a small movement speed buff as its additional effect. Nejar gives 55% attack speed and also comes with 15% crit chance, though it is worth noting we wouldn't get the heal because that requires his passive to work. Chernobog is middle of the road with 60% and comes with a damage projectile that could aid in wave clear and activating Ymir passive from range. And Kronos has the least at 35%, but comes with hands down the best additional benefits with his Wheel of Time, being able to give 35% bonus power contribution to basic attacks, among other powerful effects. The other two choices are Fenrir and Aokwang. Fenrir is a simple power and lifesteal steroid. You want it for similar reasons to the others, but of course it provides a different skill set, granting 80 power and 35% lifesteal for 6 seconds. Alquang's 2 is the most unique ability here, giving up to 570 plus 180% scaling in damage if you use all 6 dragons, which might I add is much easier on a ranged god than a melee one, and you also have the option of throwing the dragons for ranged damage if you need to. So as nice as these other options are, and they would all be great for our god, there's really no contest here. Kronos 2 is simply way better than every other option. The closest second place will probably be Alquang, but the Wheel of Time is simply too strong. The attack speed steroid is great since we don't currently have one in our kit yet, remember we have Ymir passive and Expel bowlers so far, and then having 35% bonus AA damage, 25% bonus power, a nice heal or free abilities which works great with bowlers since they cost a lot at max rank, this is a simple victory for Accelerate. Alright moving on to that third slot, keeping in mind we have Frostbite, Branching Bowlers and Accelerate so far. On the chopping block for the third slot ability we have Bakasura, Chiron, Sol, Bologna, and Sun Wukong. 
So the third ability slot is by far the weakest in Smite and is mostly reserved for movement abilities and utility, so there's not too much to choose from here. Bakasura's true damage on Butcher Blades is really nice when applied to a ranged god. Chiron's dash is just a solid escape ability that can also be used to chase since you can fire autos during it and they have bonus damage. Souls 3 is one of the best movement abilities in the game even after its nerfs. Similar to Chiron dash, you can use it and still fire basic attacks until you go immune. Really nice for an ADC god or any squishy really. Bologna's Scourge is great for heals and having a disarm on a hunter is really strong. However, much like Shield Bash from earlier, I have to assume this would turn our god melee for the duration which isn't ideal. And Sun Wukong is just a nice flexible escape or chase tool. You mostly want it for the bird, but having the flexibility to use Tiger or Ox when appropriate is nice. So this one, as I said earlier, is quite low power level. Sol and Wukong are the two that really stand out to me, but I think Sol's 3 is just stronger. It does deceptively good damage, has 40% movement speed for 3 seconds, and then of course you go immune to all damage and CC at the end. It's a solid safety and escape tool, exactly what an ADC needs to stay alive in teamfights. Okay, on to the big boy of the kit, the ultimate. So far we have Ymir's passive, Expel's branching bowlers, Kronos' accelerate, and Sol's disapparate. My considerations for the ultimate are as follows. For mana, Set, Kali, Artemis, Persephone, and Olorum. Also, I would include Expal and Chrono Salts in here, but due to my rule of only one ability per god, they're banned. Settle is here for the damage, movement speed, and healing that it provides. Like a lot of abilities in this video, transferring this from a melee god to a ranged one makes it really strong, even when the clones and uncapped attack speed part of the ability is cut because it's a separate part of his kit. Kali ult makes it so you can't die. Simple. This is obviously pretty strong on a god with damage output as insane as the one we've created so far, but of course it's a little less good than it is on Kali because we don't have her passive to work with. The mana ult is another melee to ranged ability that's pretty busted, giving our ADC 35 of each protections, 100 power, which by the way is 200 extra damage on your autos because of your mere passive, and they hit in an AoE. Not really sure how that would work with ranged basic attacks, but I assume it will work like Morrigan's passive basic attack hit. And of course the movement speed, health regen and damage shield on top of that for 6 seconds base which can be extended up to 10 seconds. Artemis ult is just a solid team fighting CC ability, being able to stun is great since we do have such high single target basic attack damage on this god, being able to lock someone down like that and just pump damage into them will be really good. Persephone is similar, giving you some solid lockdown that allows you to pump damage downrange at the enemy you locked in the cage and also to the other enemies that you immobilise for the duration. And finally, Oleron ult, which is just a good ability in general and would be nice to have on any character. Similar to the previous two, this allows you to immobilise targets to use your basic attacks to shred them and also helps you in boxing other ADCs since you slow them down. So this has to be for mana's colossal fury. There's no question here really. Having 35 protections, 100 power, up to 50% of your HP in regen and another 50% in shields, plus 15% movement speed and AoE auto attacks, this ability will be insane on a ranged ADC for sure. So that's our theoretical ultimate ADC in Smite. Ymir's Frostbite passive for double damage auto attacks, Expel's branching bowlers for the first ability to cover wave clear and bonus damage on your auto attacks, Kronos' Accelerate for the insane attack speed steroid and damage boost that it can give from the Wheel of Time, Sol's Disapparate as our escape ability, and finally, Vermana's Colossal Fury for the ultimate. There's a ton of synergy here, and the kit itself really revolves around that insanely broken Ymir passive. Being able to double the damage of your auto attacks is pretty good on an ADC, it turns out. We have Branching Bowler auto attacks as our main form of wave clear, which might seem weak, but it works for x and these autos hit way harder than x ever could because of the passive. Souls 3 can keep us safe in almost every situation. We can shred objectives due to Ymir's passive activating on Fire Giant and the like. And if we ever struggle in a fight, we have the Colossal Fury to give us tons of sustain and extra damage for up to 10 seconds in a team fight. This kit is utterly broken, as it was meant to be, and any current god would fear this amalgamation of characters we've created here. And just for fun, this is the build I would likely use on this god if it existed. Devourer's Gauntlet, Ninja Tabby, Arcee, Rage, Executioner, Deathbringer, selling boots for Odysseus Bow late game. This build provides insane lifesteal when combined with the Ymir passive and x bowlers to the point where you'd probably be healing for 400 per auto since we also have crit in this build. Being able to double or more with Deathbringer, the damage of your auto attacks that were already doubled by Ymir passive would be just insane. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little silly but it was just meant for fun. Exploring the unexplored in Smite is always fun I think. If you did enjoy then don't forget to drop a like before you leave and subscribe for more videos just like this one three times a week here on the channel. 
Have a great day, stay safe, and peace out, you nerds.